Did you know that service architecture market surpassed a impressive nine billion dollars in 2022, and is projected to experience a compound growth of over 25 percent from 2023 through 2032? So, what's the deal with serverless? Serverless is a cloud computing model that allows developers to build and run applications. Without having to manage the underlying infrastructure, on paper, let's break this down. In a traditional server-based architecture, organizations are responsible for provisioning, scaling, and maintaining servers to host their applications. With serverless, those administration tasks are still there. Despite their still servers, as a developer, you can see them. All of those are managed by cloud providers. Such as AWS Lambda function from Amazon Web Services, Azure functions from Microsoft Azure, and cloud functions from Google Cloud Platform. I can go on. They are big players, but the market has more to offer. Apart from public cloud providers, you also have some open source options, such as Fusion, OpenSAS, and Knative. We even got a playlist about serverless functions on our channel. Check it out if you're interested. Service is great in many ways because developers can concentrate on coding, doing the job they really enjoy, without worrying about any side hustle with their service. Picture this: your favorite pizza magically appears at your doorstep whenever you crave it. In service computing, it's like having a chef in the cloud handle the whole pizza making process. Developers just concentrate on coding and building features, similar to creating a perfect recipe. While the cloud provider takes care of resources, scale applications, and manages the infrastructure dynamically. It sounds perfect, doesn't it? Although the real world doesn't always match with this perfection. So let's talk about fast. Function as a service is part of serverless computing, focusing on individual code snippets or functions that embody specific business logic. Unlike platform as a service, fast keeps things simple, is streamlined and flexible. This means developers get to focus on their primary task: coding, coding, and more coding. Popular platforms such as AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, and Google Cloud Functions are supported by leading cloud providers. They stand out in event-driven architecture, support various programming languages, and seamlessly integrate with other cloud services. That service really help you save on cost, though. The real world always more complicated than it may seem. In theory, service computing is a cost-effective solution for businesses operating on a pay-as-you-go model. Instead of dealing with fixed monthly fees or server maintenance, or employing a virtual machine in the cloud, you pay only the computer resources used during your code execution. This approach contrasts with traditional server-based models. Where organizations frequently invest in infrastructure that remains underutilized during periods of low demand. According to Deloitte's research on the total cost of ownership with Fortune 100 clients across industries, service applications can deliver significant cost savings, reaching up to 57 percent when compared to server-based solutions. While service computing promises cost efficiency, it's important to note that it doesn't guarantee cheaper IT operations for every workload. So it is necessary to conduct a thorough assessment, considering the specific requirements of your applications as well as their usage patterns, to determine if service can truly save you money. What's even more factual is some workloads are even more expensive. When executed in service environment, when you are figuring out if service solutions make financial sense, it's crucial to grasp the main cost factors. These typically include computer resources, which is the computer power needed for your application, memory or storage allocation for the overall data size, and data transfer costs for moving data in and out. By understanding these factors, you can wisely decide if a service approach. Fits your specific needs and budget. 
Service architectures are cost-effective for workouts experiencing fluctuating usage patterns, which means a tuning between high activity and low traffic periods. To tackle this kind of workout, buying and maintaining a constantly running server may not make a financial sense. Let's talk about what workloads align best with service computing. Firstly, we have low and variable workloads, perfect for applications with irregular traffic or low user demand. Service shines here by being highly cost-effective, eliminating charges for idle server time, as it automatically scales down to zero during inactive periods. Next up is high burst traffic, where serverless excels in managing sudden spikes in usage. Unlike traditional setups, it may require over-provisioning for peak loads, resulting in unnecessary costs during regular usage. Service adapts seamlessly to vary demands. Move on to predictable workloads. If your application maintains steady and predictable usage patterns, opting for provision infrastructure with reserved instance capacity may prove more cost-effective compared to going serverless. Lastly, for short-lived tasks that execute quickly and demand minimal resources, serverless is a go-to choice for cost efficiency. In contrast, provisioned servers may incur higher costs due to minimum capacity or specific billing requirements. Understanding your workload type is important for making informed decisions. It's not just about saving money, but also about getting the best performance that suits exactly what you need. While service computing has its advantages, there are also some drawbacks to consider. For tasks that run for extended periods, service may become more expensive in the long run. Making provisioned or reserved infrastructure could be a cheaper option. Security and privacy are also things to consider. When you go serverless, you are giving some of your data to another company, and how well it's protected can vary. Also, you'll be sharing resources in the cloud data center with others among companies that have to charge serverless. Sixteen percent worry about security and the unknown parts of the cloud. Another thing to consider is monitoring. In the world of serverless, if something isn't working right, figuring out the problem can be challenging. Fortunately, there are specialized solutions for this, such as Datadog, New Relay, and Splunk. Ideally, having end-to-end full-stack monitoring is crucial to identify and address any issues effectively. There's also a little hidden detail about serverless. When you are on a pay-as-you-go model, there's a brief preparation phase called code start. This is the process of setting an execution environment. Which can take a few hundred milliseconds. This could be critical when you are working on a workload needing predictable low latency. Popular platforms like AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, and Google Cloud Functions offer different strategies to mitigate or avoid it. It's all about choosing the right strategy from these platforms to keep your architecture running smoothly and efficiently. Right, you would need a premium version of service function to avoid cold start. This translates to configuring provisioned concurrency for AWS Lambda function, or opting for a premium or dedicated plan for edge functions to achieve the same. These measures help preform the function instances and preventing a cold start. If you enjoy this content. Check out this playlist. It's all about serverless, and my other playlists. We also have more content will be coming for you. So if you don't want to miss anything, subscribe and turn on notifications. This is Cloud Metal West. My name is Melanie. I will see you in the next one.